for our team, um, having done uh, a very good job in our last two road performances. So it's going to take a concentrated effort uh, to go into a very tough place to play against a very good team um, and be better. And that's what we're trying to work on. It's the first time in a long time that we've had, you know, have some space in between game to game where we can get to practice and focus in on cleaning some things up, improving on some things. And I thought yesterday was a step in the right direction, and we'll come back today uh, with the same mentality. And uh, you know, having some practice time is actually, you know, refreshing for the staff because it just seemed like we were really game upon game stacked, stacked up with travel and and preparing. Uh, our guys to play in the games rather than continue to work on just the little things that you have to work on every single day to be sharp. So um, it's an important week for us trying to improve and, and, and obviously get ready to go on Saturday afternoon. Archie, how do you prepare, how do you practice their leg? How do you, how do you, do you have guys with brooms or what do you do? No, I mean, um, very, very big team. I mean, maybe one of college basketball's uh, biggest teams. That's how they were constructed. Uh, they play a certain style defensively, uh, whether it's their matchup, their man, or their zones, that uh, they take advantage of the length as well. I mean, that's why I think over the last, I don't know how many years, I mean, you pretty much put Louisville right at the top of defensive efficiency and, and one of the hardest teams to score on. But it also creates some problems for you on the other end, too. I mean, because where their size is overwhelming, um, inside is always big, but the perimeter guys with the Dell and uh, and King and some of the, the, the perimeter guys that they have, uh, just being so so big and being able to shoot over top of you or drive to the basket and overpower you, um, you know that's a concern as well. But uh, you know it's not going to change who we are. Or they are so we just have to go play. Mike, yeah, as far as practice goes and getting back to the actual practice schedule this week, what are maybe one or two things you guys have really tried to hammer home? You know, getting some getting some time to work for yourselves this week. Well, the, the one thing is obviously defensively continuing to try and be a better half-court, you know, defensive team. Uh, it starts with transition and working on that daily and getting back is always a challenge. But, you know, in the half-court, how can we become more disciplined? How can we become more uh, aware of positioning? And some of the things that I think are really hurting our team in terms of uh, giving up three-point shots, you know. It's not this teams are getting wide open looks. Why are they getting them? And, and part of just being a better half-court defensive team, principal team, uh, more discipline. And that's something as we've played the games, we've tried to harp on with film and show, but now you're sort of getting back to, even getting back to some practices that, that look more like October practices where you continue to talk about the, just the, the base stuff, getting good at it. So I would say just becoming a better half court defensive team, becoming a better defensive rebounding team, or more of an emphasis being able to, to rebound the ball every day in practice. And then, you know, from an offensive perspective, just continue to work on moving the ball, continue to, to, to execute and clean some things up. But uh, it's definitely, it's sort of a blue collar week for us. We really try to use the practices that way. Just to follow up, how do you teach discipline on the defensive end? Is that just something that has to come with reps or you mentioned film or how do you I think it's a, it's a combination of, you know, rep, repetition, you know. As much as people want to say players improve, you know, offensively, they improve defensively the same rate. You just don't get the same statistics, you know what I mean? But players grow defensively with repetition and practice and drill work and, and being able to compete in one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -on -two or three-on-three -three drills where they're exposed. You put them on islands and they have to you know, you know, compete and play and, 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 and play without fouling, you know, things like that. So um, you get better on defense with repetition. I think you see yourself on film is also a, a good thing. I think there's some things from the idle game that were much better than, than some of the other previous games. So we took a step in the right direction, you know, I think coming off the Michigan loss. Uh, so it's, it's a combination of things. Mike. Coach, you, I think Zach McRoberts has played more minutes the last two games than the rest of the year combined before yeah. that. What, what, what gave you the confidence to go with him? Well, he stays with it you know, pretty much every day. He, uh, he brings his hard hat to practice. And um, you know, just in studying our practice films or studying our practice statistics, Zach has climbed the ladder and he's earned the minutes in the game. And, uh, probably should have earned them a few games earlier, to be quite honest with you. That's, that's on us as a staff. And um, trust Zach right now. Uh, plays extremely hard. He gives us a bigger body on the perimeter at times. And he gives you another guy that makes hustle plays, winning plays, whether it's on the floor, whether it's an offensive rebound, whether it's just, you know, it's something positive is going to happen, you know, in his time out there. You know, as the season has evolved, he's put himself in a situation where he's earned the minutes. And, 
he'll continue to earn more minutes as well, I think, because um, you know, his effort level, his understanding of some of the things we're trying to do um, is winning basketball. Coach, you've had a few games now to kind of see what, um, you know, Al being in the starting lineup, what kind of look that gives you, and obviously having Devontae come off the bench. I guess just what have your early impressions of that lineup been? What do you like that you've gotten out of it? What do you maybe still want to see out of it? Well, I, you know, I don't necessarily know whether starting the game has, has made, made a big difference for either player sure. or any of the other players. I just think that Al had earned the right over the course of the practices in the early games to, to get in that, that opportunity to get the start. Devontae played very, very well against Iowa, and he had one of his best practices in probably over a month yesterday. So, you know, having Devontae play really meaningful minutes is important to us. Having him play well is important to us. Um, but I like where Al's at as well. You know, I think uh, Al's a freshman. He's going to go through ups and downs, but I think he's gaining a lot of experience right now. And again, I think he's earned our trust. So. Um, the lineup could change, I guess, again. Uh, I'm not sure about it. I mean, we're looking for answers at all times. I think some of the combinations in the games that you see play longer stretches have solely to do with how the game is currently going. So, um, but I like uh, how, how Devontae uh, hasn't lost a step. And like I said before, I thought he really played well against Iowa. Sorry, I have a bigger picture question. But we, I don't think we've asked you about scheduling philosophy in a while, but these two weekends are, are always, they're always just big weekends because there's dead week and there's finals and, and everybody's kind of trying to get through the end of the semester. Do you do you kind of envision long term games like Louisville, Notre Dame being kind of staples of weekends like this? I know it's yeah, hard because I mean, it's working with other programs. Your ears must have been buzzing. We were talking about non conference scheduling on our way down the hall just a minute ago. <laughs> um, clearly, the non conference schedule being built properly for your your team in a given year is the most important thing. You know who your team is that year, whether you're young, you're rebuilding, or you're very experienced or you're really good, you know, that schedule in the non-conference has to put you in a situation that you enter conference play, one, really battle-tested, two, you did enough to put yourself in a situation where the NCAA tournament selection committee is looking at you and saying you did exactly what we're asking you guys to do. You played people, you played good teams, you played on the road, and, you know, constructs your resume, so to speak. But I think our non-conference schedule movement in the future, um, especially with the Big Ten going to 20, we have to really evaluate our model. And I think, like you said, a weekend game at Louisville, yeah, I think that'll always be a part of it, whether it's Notre Dame. But uh, the spacing of the games and having uh, important you know, home and away opponents every year, very, very important to what we're doing. And I just think as we keep uh, evaluating how this is gonna go through the 20, and looking at the Big East, the Gavit, uh, Indianapolis, some of our, uh, you know, previously scheduled contracts that we were down the road, you know, knowing whether you're in a Maui or one of those things, you know, I think you have to be very, very strategic in who you put, you know, on the non-conference. But clearly the best opponents, the ones that make the most sense, there's a fan appeal as well. Uh, being in the, in the venues and, and with the teams that you want to compete against on a national level are very important. <clears throat> Your turnovers have gotten better exception of a couple times. I'm on now. You guys keep bringing up the turnovers and then going on the road to play Louisville. You know? uh, but our turnovers are something that uh, we're, we're constantly evaluating the discipline and the decision making, especially when it comes to uh, first half. You know, first half of games is when they're away from you. In many ways, you're in transition a lot off the of stops. You don't have their attention. So turnovers in the first half are something that uh, a little bit of, you know, that's always a concern for us. I think we had seven maybe against Iowa and then or maybe eight, I'm not sure, but only had a couple in the second half, which was good to see. But we want to be a team that's playing in a low turnover percentage. I think it's important. I think going on the road against Louisville will be another really important thing. And I think part of it is, you know, guys going into the game not thinking about anything other than the, the simple play. I thought we did a really good job against Iowa of getting the ball advanced. You know, it wasn't any messing around, over dribbling, you know, hammering the ball up the floor, letting the defense recover. I thought Colin, I thought Josh, I thought when guys had the ability to advance it up the floor, that really got our offense moving faster and was good. But we're trying to keep our turnovers down. I think it's something that we're really mindful of. Uh, 
Coach, I know you released a statement last week on uh, Curtis Jones' decision to transfer at the end of the semester. I was wondering just if you had any further comment and whether there will be any restrictions on where he can go. No restrictions at all. Uh, wish Curtis the best. Uh, you know, it's a personal decision based, you know, on him and, and his his comfortability of, of moving forward. I mean, um, really, other than stating what we said, we do wish him well, but uh, don't ever really want anybody to leave at the break. It's never. Uh, you know, positive thing, but uh, I think Curtis being here for over a year and a half, he made his own decision, and we support him with that, and uh, wherever he ends up, I, I think he'll be successful. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thank you.